OK, now capture, and I've used the term capture rather than, I can't remember the light bulb one now, did I have? Success or something, a question mark. Um, it's because the idea is to create and capture some benefit. And I use the term benefit or value rather than profit or growth because organisations have different motives for innovating. Yeah? Some want to make lots of money, some want to grow very quickly, some don't want to do either of those. If you look at entrepreneurial startups, I can't remember the exact figure, but it's something like 96% are lifestyle businesses. I said that with some disdain, didn't I? I shouldn't have said that. Let's try it again. 96% are lifestyle businesses, yeah. Um, people do it because they want autonomy and control, or they've got no other options, frankly, yeah? But we tend to think of startups and ventures as entrepreneurial and growth and innovative. They're not. Around about 4% are any of those things, yeah? And they're very different to the other 96%, okay? So why you're innovating, what is your goal in terms of end value utility? It's really, 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 really important because it has to filter back to where you look and what types of things you pursue and select. Okay? So this is important in the sense it does feed back to here and it does feed back to where you look for solutions and such like. Okay? So I am not drawing all those arrows back, they're given. But really they do are motivated by what is the goal? Why are you innovating? Is it to save lives? Is it to make money? Yeah? Is it to dominate the world? Is it several of these things? Okay, so a very important part to be managed. And in that, there are two separate sets of activities. One is the creation of value. How does this innovation create value? It's the same question we asked in the other session, didn't it? It might do these fun fancy things in terms of function, but who, who would value that? How does it create value? That's the more naive question. And then the separate question, which is hardly ever asked, is how might we capture some of that value? And you see so many cases where the two are disconnected that you figured out, okay, that segment or application will create some value and we can talk to those guys and create a product. And they don't think until it's far too late about but how can we actually appropriate some value from that transaction? In the horrible terms of internet startups, how do we monetize it? But it's not just about monetization. How do we capture any value from it? And when you get a dislocation from the creation of value from innovation and its capture, what do you think happens? Do you think there is a difference between you know, the innovation of a product and innovation of a service? Yes. Um, do you want a more? Yes, there is. Yeah, yeah. What is the key difference between the two? In terms of service, it's more like an ecosystem. Like, um, no, yeah, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll discuss it in the next session when we look at the, the blurring of that distinction. Yeah? I think you're right, they're different. Partly because services can have tangibles and intangibles. They can have product and process. But most products are more about product by definition. What, what is delivered rather than how it's delivered. But yes, you're right, they're different. They're different. But products can have ecosystems, as we'll see when we look in this session with Apple and Android. So I don't think, it's, I don't think that's the big distinction. But you're dead right, they're, they're very different entities. Um, but what we will say, the warning against, if you have a disconnect between the creation of value from innovation and how you capture some benefit from that, why? What happens next if you fail to connect those two things up? You don't learn next Yeah, true. You don't learn. Well, most organizations don't learn. I mean, they just have a success and they pat themselves on the back and appear on TV and then fall on their face. Or they, or they have a failure and then they blame the wrong things. They blame the team rather than the timing or something. So. OK, yes, yeah, some other company could come in and benefit. And that, ha that happens, I'm afraid, in innovation. Sometimes you don't get it right, and another company will benefit from your mistakes. That's a given. But more fundamentally, what? You'll run out of resources. <laughs> yes, you will run out of resources, because you're not capturing value to rejuvenate. More fundamentally, innovation stops. How dramatic can that be? <laughs> it does. It stops. And whether you look at companies who do it, whether you look at countries who do it, if you look at business sectors who do it, where you disconnect the creation, through, creation of value through innovation and capture some of that benefit, the incentive and the resources to innovate are no longer available. And after one or two iterations, innovation doesn't happen. So you get whole economies and whole sectors where innovation just doesn't really happen because you have that disconnect. So one of the tricks here, you know, whether you're an entrepreneur trying to figure out how do I make this thing fly, or whether you're a policymaker saying how do I make this region or country grow again is to try to reconnect that so you align the incentives in terms of well if people are <laughs> successful in terms of innovation create value there should be some mechanism that they can capture some of that value to reinvest and, and hopefully learn for the next cycle but the default is often a disconnect 
Those who benefit didn't create, and those who create don't benefit very much. And it all breaks down really quickly. From a practical point of view, one of the problems I see is that capturing the benefits can take a very long time. And it's not like you've just you've done your innovation, you've found the innovation, you're et cetera, et cetera. And the capturing is not, OK, just sitting it out to, let's say it's a product, you know, yeah. taking it out to the market. Because maybe, <laughs> maybe it'll take you five years to get all the benefits. Mm. So what happens in terms of the overall innovation process? In the meantime, you just concentrate on capturing those, or there's a few different things yeah. happening at different times. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's, that's very complicated. But, but you're dead right, you're dead right. And we talk about, it's one of these, either we talk, to, you think we saw it in the last session or the next session, but we will talk about in the next session about capturing value, because that's what it's all about, really. But to answer your question, that's the, you dead right, you've identified a common failure in a product based, particularly startups, is they figure out, sort of, how they're going to get, develop it, maybe get their first customer, maybe their, their first product, but they don't think beyond that. And then everything dries up in terms of resources, unless they're in biotech and they just have another round of funding and a party. But outside biotech, you think, we have no income. Yeah? And often they cease to exist or there's a trade sale and the original managers are put to one side. And the bigger companies then sit out the thing. And that's quite a sad story. But that's an example of a disconnect. It's the group that developed it don't directly benefit. There might be a trade sale, but they might not. Yeah? That's why a product-based, pure product-based strategy is really a bad idea in most cases, whatever the lead time. So when we talk about things like licensing, joint ventures, often you need a, a sort of wider repertoire of how you capture value from that. Otherwise, if you rely on products, well, I mean, it's a bit like the, um, you can tell 